to The Road Not Taken, discussions with assorted professionals with a background in mathematics. I'm your host, Eder Kikianti. And I'm your host, Belinda Stoppelbach. We are joined today by my good friend, Mark Rulans. Hi, Mark. Hi. <laughs> nice of you to work that in. Yeah. <laughs> Mark is currently an assistant professor at Leiden University in the Netherlands. Uh, Mark actually worked in South Africa before at um, Northwest University as a postdoctoral fellow. He has his PhD from the University of Kent in the UK. And before that, he actually worked as a mathematics teacher and a chef. It's very interesting. And we would like to know more about this. So, uh, Mark, we always start with uh, the first question for our guest in this series about your mathematical journey. Can you perhaps tell us? Your, how, how do you get into mathematics and, and so on? Of course. H- hello. Um, <laughs> yes, this... Um, I suppose this journey is an unconventional one. And, and to be perfectly honest, it, it, it is also one that kind of happened by accident because I, I, I discovered that I liked mathematics when I was about 23 years old. And before this, before this time, I never really knew anything about this. Uh, I don't know this 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 wonderful field. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. You're going to probably ask me about the cooking part later. So I'll just yeah. start. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll just start at the accident. Or, or this coincidence. <laughs> so r- r- right around the time when I decided to um, to try something new, um, uh, studying was uh, was was something that I had never really do- uh, had done seriously on a on, on on an academic level or university level. So I was curious about this um, because cooking is very practical. It, it is that doesn't mean it's it's easy, but it it just means that uh, there is a different way of of accumulating knowledge and becoming better at what you do compared mm. to, well, uh, university studies. So uh, this was interesting. I had no idea which subject uh, to do, though. Um, so after months of thinking, I decided that uh, I'd probably start with the most popular subject at the time, which was uh, psychology. Um, mm. But for, psych- for psychology, you needed um, mathematics, biology, and English at a pre-university level in order to, to enter. Um, and uh, since I I didn't really finish uh, at a high level of high school, um, I was most scared of of the mathematics uh, 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 pre university level. <laughs> so in the beginning, uh, I was still cooking at the time, by the way. So um, uh, I did all of these courses uh, at home. So they would mail me chapters from books, and then. I would read them, make homework exercises, send them back via mail. This is a long time ago, obviously, yeah. because this was all still on, on paper and you would have written feedback uh, wow. on, on envelopes and stuff like this. Um, but I was, uh, I was very worried about whether or not I was able to do that. So I had a tutor in the beginning. And um, yeah, I- interestingly enough, after a week or so, I I understood what was going on quite well, and I was able to to sort of predict what was going to be mailed the week after and the week after. And at some point, I didn't need the tutor anymore, and the subject sort of started to be to become alive. It it, it came alive uh, in mm. in my imagination, mm. and uh, this was a this was a huge surprise. I had no idea. That, uh, that that I liked it uh, this much, um, and uh, I decided after that to not do biology uh, and also not do English, but then do mm. the more uh, theoretical part of maths also at home. Um, that this included um, geometry and more advanced integration uh, uh, subjects like these, and yeah, this was even better. I mean, I, I like this even more. Uh, and then I knew this was something that I had to study. This, this was it. So I, 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 that's how I found it. So that's the start of uh, 
sort of the university uh, going to university journey. Um, mm -hmm. do, do you want me to, to keep going until where I am now or just Actually, to start? Have, or, yeah, yeah, have a question before you, you move forward. Um, <laughs> could you perhaps <laughs> explain the, um, <laughs> this, this system in the Netherlands of the schooling? Um, because you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that at school you didn't have the highest possible mathematics yeah, okay. courses. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe yeah, that okay, will help okay. to put it into context. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, so, well, uh, when, when you go to primary school, at the end of primary school, just be before you go to high school, <coughs> you have to do some sort of, um, some sort of test. And according to this test, they advise you uh, which level of high school uh, you can start in. Um, and there are three levels, basically. There's the lower one, the middle one, and the higher one. Uh, and you can only go to university if you get your higher high school level type of degree. Now, mm -hmm. I had the lowest one uh, because of uh, my home situation um, and for other reasons. <laughs> Um, I think I was a bit of a rascal also in high school. <laughs> pay, a, pay a lot of attention. I was I was I was more interested in other things. Let's let's put it like this. Um, so all of these uh, circumstances combined resulted in having the lowest possible uh, high school degree. And now what you can do is uh, once you pass the age of twenty one, is apply for a so called colloquium doctum. Uh, which is, um, well, an, it's like an entrance, an admittance exam to start studying at university once you're an adult. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you just need to show that you have the appropriate level uh, of, well, pre-university knowledge uh, mm -hmm. about the subjects that, that are directly related to what you want to study. Um, and you can do that by showing them that you have certificates for each of these subjects, or mm -hmm. you can just pass the exam. Uh, and both will, will end up letting you in, as far as I know. So uh, that's okay. that's how the system works, more or less. Uh, yeah. So the 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 the, the, the road with least resistance is just yeah, being good in high school, getting the highest level, <laughs> just go and do your studies immediately, mm -hmm. um, unless there is numerous fixes, of course. But uh, mm. that, that's not the case for mathematics. Mm. Um, and then just just keep keep doing what you like from, from that right. point on. If, if, yeah, if you take a non-standard journey, then yeah, there are yeah. more bumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you um, finished with your degree, um, studying at university, did you immediately go um, on to studying, you know, post-grad or did you, I think you see you've become a mathematics teacher at some point. I'm not sure when that was in the, the system. Oh, this was, <laughs> I was still studying. I was oh, so oh, I, okay. I I worked I worked two jobs next to my studies. So I was teaching in oh, high school okay, wow. and I was cooking in the weekends. Oh wow! And studying at that's, the same that's, time. That's, yeah. yeah, that's a lot of wow. determination. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is it. It sort of comes naturally because you do something you like. So there's doesn't it sounds like a lot of effort, but it's it it isn't really. Yes. Okay, but well, that's very, very interesting. And at what yeah. point did you uh, study and work as a mathematics teacher? Was this during your master's? <coughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, there was, um, uh, there was a, a bit of a gap uh, because I, I, uh, I, I got married at some point and my, 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 my wife at the time uh, was not Dutch, so uh, she moved to the Netherlands, and um, I was not allowed to be a full-time student uh, because I, I, I needed okay. to have sufficient income for all of this to be accepted by the system. Um, and uh, that's why I was uh, working so much. Yeah. Mm, okay. yeah. So I, I, I worked as a teacher in high school for about five years. Mm, and okay. then I, I try to do as much studying as possible uh, mm, mm, uh, along, along the side. Yeah. And, and how, how is that teaching in high school? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, it do you is wanna, it's, have it's, any stories to share? So, <laughs> um, yes, but I'm not sure how appropriate they are <laughs> in, <laughs> for this interview. <laughs> it's, it is, what I can say is this, it's one of the most 
one of the most wonderful jobs I've ever had mm. was mm. Uh, was was teaching in high school and being with the kids. This is this was it's it's right. fantastic. It's re- it's a lot of fun. It's a lot and, a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 And coming back to that the, the system again, which kind of high school did you did you teach in? That what level you mean? Yeah. What level? Yeah. All, all, all of all levels. All of them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All so I, I, there, yes, yes, yes. There were twelve-year-olds up until eighteen-year-olds. Yeah. And at all, at these... all the levels. So from the middle, yeah, from the middle, uh, yeah, low, okay. and the highest level. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now I wanted to know how it compares for you with teaching um, university students in terms of you know teaching the math after high school teaching and then the university students are they much different? We've had somebody, yes. I think, already talk about it, <laughs> but it would well, be interesting to see your experience. Yeah. Well, it's a different way of communicating with people because they're different people, different mm-hmm. types. I mean, th- these are these are kids, and mm-hmm. university students are adults, so you have different expectations, mm-hmm. uh, and there are different things that you need to take into account for. When you're teaching kids, it is more imp- probably one of the most important things to try and do is to get their attention. And there are many ways to to do this, but as uh, but but as as long as you're able to to get their attention and just to have them listen to what you say, that already is uh, is quite an accomplishment, I think. <laughs> um, whereas for university students they are already there wanting mm-hmm. to listen to you so there is a different mm-hmm. there there is a different uh, 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 point of view already mm-hmm. yeah okay, so there it becomes more like a yeah it's 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 like a game with the children it's <laughs> like a game you need to, because they, they 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 challenge you they, they they don't always want to want to behave and then <laughs> It's it's up to the teacher to try and make it either funny so that you 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 you, you get their attention or mm. or or say something interesting or yeah. I don't know it's like it's more like a game mm. at least that's how it was for me yeah, that's how I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I can't imagine. It sounds very fun. I, I forgot to ask. Where did you do your um, undergraduate mathematics? Uh, Leiden. Also Leiden. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And then your master's also at Leiden, right? Yes. Yes. And then you moved to the UK for your for your for your PhD. Right. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you mentioned earlier that during um during your pre university the study is more distant learning, if I may call it that, because you get mailed um material and then you no, it was back it was your... literally yeah you know yeah. it was literally yeah. this yes yeah yes. yeah and mm-hmm. what about the you know what what about the, your university days like the, the in, in Leiden university was it traditional classes uh, for, 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 for your me, undergraduate yeah y- yeah no I'm I, I don't think I I am a good example uh, <laughs> of, of, of what uh, <laughs> Of what a university student does. Um, at the time, I was working a lot, mm. so this was after my bachelor's. Yeah, I mainly I mainly studied myself at home. Right. So I I didn't really go to to lectures. I just read the books myself or the lecture mm-hmm. notes, and mm-hmm. asked questions by by actually calling the lecturers <laughs> or the assistants on back the on the, the phone back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, I managed to pass all my all my mm. courses like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is the masters also still like coursework? So is there still modules that you do, or is it just a dissertation? Do you even write the dissertation? Um, yes, or a do. thesis yeah. or whatever. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the um, there is a bit more freedom in the um, uh, master. Uh, uh, track uh, because you there are more sort of reading courses you can do. So this is this is good because you can do this at, by yourself. Mm. Um, mm. Um, and uh, so our masters for mathematics is is two, is two years. Okay. Um, and uh, in the in the last year, 
you start writing your your dissertation or thesis for your master project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you there, okay. there are so still it's... quite a lot of of courses to do still. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically the same as almost the same as UP at this point. Yeah. Um, because we also have the first year sort of like a coursework thing, and then the second year the students do their dissertations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And how how did you go to the UK, Mark? What? Well, by boat. By boat. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, seriously. <laughs> no, I am. I'm being very serious. <laughs> being very serious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we. Um, uh. This was um, uh, a friend of one of. My lecturers at the time was visiting mm -hmm. Leiden, and uh, he was looking for a PhD student. Mm -hmm. And um, and we, I remember, we were speaking in the in, in the university canteen, and mm -hmm. we got along very well. And I, mm -hmm. I thought he was a nice person. Uh, thought it was an interesting subject. Mm -hmm. So we, I mean, th yeah, that that's yeah, th that was already a good start. And then. Um, I went to visit Canterbury or the University of Kent. Uh, I think a few weeks after that, just to have a bit of a feel for the place, because I, I mean, it, it sounds like a bad idea to me to go and do a PhD somewhere for three and a half or four years in 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 a in a place you don't want to live. I mean, that that's mm. Mm. I don't think that's ideal. So I, I wanted to, to to find out how that was as well, mm. and it was great. So uh, mm. yeah, that's that that's how that. Uh, came to uh, yeah came to exist okay yeah yeah cool. so may i ask um either will probably know this now but what is your um research in actually um like what do you do <laughs> when you do mathematics i am um, i um i like metric geometry on cones and uh so there are certain very interesting um, as aspects of partially ordered vector spaces, uh, in particular how they relate to uh, this 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 vector space having uh, an algebraic structure as well. It turns out that you can see this from uh, the geometrical aspects of the cone, uh, which I think is is very. It's just beautiful. Okay. You can see that yes. these, okay. these, these two ideas are related. Um, yes. So that's one part. Uh, I also uh, like uh, vector lattices. So these are these are partially ordered vector spaces with a bit more structure. And I like uh, JB algebras. So these are, well, based on uh, mathematical models for quantum mechanics. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. And... Uh, yeah, that's that's in a nutshell, okay. more or less. Yes, I, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> so, was that part of your PhD research and so on as well? You didn't. It's all the same work that you've done throughout your mathematics um, degree, basically. Uh, I'll like answer I, your first question first. Okay. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so. My PhD thesis was about infinite dimensional metric geometry on cones. Okay. So that was a start for developing. Well, I wouldn't say that I know enough. I don't know. I certainly don't know enough about this subject, uh, uh, but at least enough to keep the curiosity going uh, and ask ask questions and try yes. to figure uh, figure out how things work yes. in, in in this setting for the the the, the first. Part of, of, of my my answer, but now I also work on different topics that are not related mm. to um, yes, subject of yes. my PhD. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, just interesting. Yeah, Mark. In fact, uh, is in uh, collaboration with some of our colleagues from UP. Um, Martin Bortel okay. is one of them, and Christopher Schwanke is another. Um, yeah. So okay. complexification um, on of vector lattices. If I'm not. Yes, thinking. this is. Uh, yeah? Yeah. No, that's that, that, that's yeah. that's correct. Yeah, this has nothing to do with uh, metric geometry on cones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It it has mm -hmm. it has to do with the idea of um, of developing a classical um, the classical theory of 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 complex analysis, so functions mm -hmm. of a complex variable, uh, to 
generalizations of the complex numbers, which are complexifications of universally complete vector lattices. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And then uh, replacing the idea of a norm that you would have uh, for the complex numbers in terms of describing mm -hmm. how things converge, like a power series, or something yes. like this, in terms of converging in order, because you still have a modulus uh, in this complexification of the vector lattice. So you replace mm -hmm. The norm with a modulus, and then you try to find out how this theory um, can be developed in that setting purely from an order theoretical point of view. And it turns out that you can do quite a lot. Mm. Okay. So that's that's research Very I'm doing with Chris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay. uh, with Martin, yeah, with with Martin is also lovely. I mean, with Martin, mm -hmm. you can work on almost everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It is, uh, yeah. But we've been we've been friends also for such a long time as well. Uh, we most of the journey, mathematical journey that I've had, is, has has overlapped with Martin's. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have worked on metric geometry of cones. Um, we are currently uh, working on order theoretical. Uh, relations between the center of operators. So from an algebraic point of view, and uh, you can think of, of, of the center as, as elements that commute with other elements in the uh, algebra. Um, okay. And there is also a, an order theoretical analog of this, which is called the order center, which comes from the theory of vector lattices, and this involves operators. And it turns out that these two things are again related. So there is a there is a related mm -hmm. there's relation between the algebraic center and the order theoretical center in the correct context. Yeah. So I'm also okay. currently working on trying to discover in more detail how these two concepts are are, are linked mm -hmm. with 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 Martin. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we have we have more more plans on trying to <laughs> further understand the, yeah. the, the, the the geometry of these partially ordered vector spaces yeah. you know, and yes. how they're related to JB algebras. And, yeah. Yeah. This for, for our audience that probably um, wondering what, what, what mathematicians are doing, that is basically it. You, yes. you generalize ideas that are familiar and so on, but <coughs> in certain properties. Um, yeah. Yet it's like non-commutative, for instance. Um, it, it sounds scary, but I mean, if you're in a second year, or in first year, even if you've seen matrix multiplication, this is something that uh, that is not no yes. no strange no, no it's not a strange mm. concept. Uh, the word is mm. sounds a bit scary, but it's no strange concept. I think for our undergraduate students, um, mm. yeah. So these are the kind of things that uh, that mathematicians do. We look at certain properties, mm. and then yeah, we we generalize it and so on. Um, yeah, I I just want to ask about uh, go going back slightly to to the so-called accident of you liking mathematics. <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, no, it, it, it is really like this. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, was that hard to, um, I don't know, I feel that when you were, uh, a lot of our students sometimes feel this way, that when you start stud studying something or you start with a potentially a career, right? So at the time you were already in cooking school, you, you work as a chef, and then now you decided, okay, I'm gonna study, um, yes. I'm gonna go to university. Um, uh, because often I, th I think students feel that, okay, I'm studying mathematics now. I don't know after my, after I finish my degree, what kind of jobs do I get? Or do I have to be a teacher? Do I have to be, because sometimes these students ask these questions to us, they would say, oh, what can I do with this degree? Am I just going to stu mm -hmm. get stuck in, 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 um, in a certain career mm -hmm. or whatever, but certainly from your story, mm -hmm. this is not true, right? You went from something very practical. Um, in cooking school and becoming a chef to the the opposite of practical, becoming something very abstract um, with doing mathematics. Were there any sort of um, challenges or what drew you into that into that move of studying? I suppose it's unavoidable when, when you're yeah. doing something, something to feel yeah. like or to wonder if whether or not this is something you would want to do the rest of your life because that's yeah. that, I mean that's quite a significant question. I think it's important to keep asking yourself this mm. no matter what the circumstances are. Uh, yeah. This is good to under, good to try and find out where you are or where you see mm. yourself or mm. if something needs to be changed. So that's that's always going to be a good question to ask yourself. But right. um, I think in in the case of 
of uh, of working as a as a chef or in the kitchen this is very demanding physical work uh, you work very long hours it's it can be very rewarding because you are working at a, a very high creative level of it, it's it's very creative and mm. it's this is what I really like about it. It's mm. Cooking at a, at a high level is is uh, well, it it also has to do with with art. I think yeah, as, yeah. in some sense you're really yeah. making something <clears throat> new and look nice and mm. also from a from a tasting point of view, it's really very it's a very creative process. And mm. I think mathematics is also a very creative process. Mm. Uh, it, it seems like you're. <laughs> Yeah, people are. People might think that it's just, uh, just abstract uh, nonsense, piecing things together, and then and then uh, just uh, putting it into into some sort of machine, and then and then and then a result comes out. But it's not like that at all. I mean, you really have mm-hmm. you really have to be creative in order to understand no. what you're thinking yeah. about. And this is. Um, this is very appealing to me. I, I enjoy this a lot. Uh, mm. However, um, uh, to answer your question, uh, so in working while working in the kitchen, it's also if you're not the the head of the kitchen yourself, it happens quite frequently that uh, the atmosphere in the kitchen is not great, and you don't always get treated equally nice. Mm-hmm. And uh, just before I decided to switch, I asked myself this very question and mm. I, the answer was i did not see myself doing this until i was uh, in my 60s um mm. yeah so that's where how when, when i decided to change and uh if you ask me now whether or not i would like to keep doing mathematics until i'm old then the answer is definitely yes mm. yeah uh mm. but i've certainly wondered yeah i mean coming yeah. from such a different background it's it's it makes it hard to feel that you fit in mm. because everyone around you has has done has made different choices and has, yeah. has very different experiences and they usually are more or less homogeneous yeah they all yeah all my colleagues were very good at high school they they went into university very early and mm. very early on and they yeah, they, they 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 blossomed very fast, and yeah. now they're all here. And I, I seem to have, yeah, taken a a, a huge detour. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But it's it's very courageous. I feel like in I, I mean, mm. when you're 21, 22, that age, you know, you feel that um, you will. You feel that you know everything, but you but you didn't know you don't know. Oh no, I I, I know I I, <laughs> I, 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 I I think I knew back then that I also didn't know. Uh, yeah, and so so to actually change decide to change your okay, I'm gonna go start studying now. It's very courageous, I think, because a lot of people maybe think that okay, I have a degree, and this is what I must do. There's nothing, I can't change things anymore, but this is, especially now I feel that people just change jobs left and left and right. This is uh, more fluid. Mm-hmm. I think in, in this age that people more accepting of, of, um, of, mm-hmm. of changing careers. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this, well, yeah, it might look like this from the outside, mm-hmm. but I can tell you that I never, I never felt brave. Uh, <laughs> uh it just felt like the right thing to do, right? Because it's what you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and it would be a waste to look back when you're sixty and regret yeah, regret yeah. not trying it. It, yeah. it. That makes no sense to me. It, yeah. Might as well try it. Hmm. Uh, yeah. It's just silly not to do it. I don't. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. You have all you have all these ideas, and you you understand that you like something. Why yeah. would you not try? Uh, yeah. 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 No, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so I think that's um, something that I think it's a very difficult question. What do I want to do? This is a very difficult question, especially that age mm-hmm. of, yeah. you're in university. Yeah. It's very difficult to answer this question. So it's it's okay to wonder, mm-hmm. I think, and and it's good to talk to people, I suppose, and get get advice and so on. Um, yeah, I suppose it's necessary to wonder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And mm-hmm. if you and and because the question is very hard, there are several yeah. ways to go about at least meander to some sort of answer. And it, that is mm. by wondering, yeah. or by experimenting, by just yeah. trying. Because yeah. you can mm-hmm. by experiencing it, you also understand whether or not it suits you. Or, or, or mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. 
the, the worst thing to do is nothing. Like, yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was something you mentioned earlier, Mark, that, that piqued my interest. Um, so because of the format of your study, <laughs> um, that you have to, um, you have to, you know, you, you got mailed chapters and then, so a lot of self-studying from your side, I think, um, since yeah. you, uh, awesome. since your pre-university courses, right? You're, you're used to uh, self-study. Um, I don't know if you can comment on the importance of the skill of, of self-studying, especially for university uh, students. Because yes, we yes. encourage our students to come to <coughs> lectures and then you know uh, yes. attend the lectures and go to tutorials, whatever. But I always feel that, for myself at least, not until I pick up the textbook and really struggle with the textbook while I was studying in undergraduate. So yes, I attend the lectures, but I need that time to really read the textbook and um, mm-hmm. understanding it myself, th- that level. Uh, that I, mm-hmm. I fully understand, uh, also can't say fully understand, but I more, more understand, <laughs> but I get more understanding um, of, the, of the subject yeah. than simply just going to a class and listen to the, to the lectures. I mean, that's also good mm-hmm. because there's someone explaining to you and that helps you, but you also need to take that action of self-studying. Maybe you yes. can comment on this because primarily this is what you're doing while you're studying. I think it is necessary yeah. to, in, in order to process the information, it, 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 okay, let me say it like this. I think it is, it is very normal yeah. for students to go to a lecture and not fully understand what mm. has been done during class. So yeah. this forces the students to do self-study because in order to understand it better, you need to practice it a few times or yeah. I don't know understanding mathematics is twofold in my opinion you have the jargon of the subject and then you have yeah. the theory of the subject and yeah. you need to try and familiarize yourself with both and mm-hmm. this re- requires especially the jargon requires practice and yeah. trying to think of examples or non-examples which is equally important mm. um, and then once you get used to it once you get the elasticity in your imagination to Hmm. stop uh, uh, having to to, to, to uh, re- remind yourself what the objects are you're thinking about once that flows yeah. then you yeah. can then you can practice with 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 the theorems or the proofs or combining yeah. them to get new ideas or whatever yeah. and this 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 must follow from from self study so hmm. mm-hmm. uh, this is I, I think a necessary part of yeah. of, of learning uh, something uh, as intrinsic as as a mathematical subject yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah we, we often say to our first year that um, especially when you're dealing with infinity and they often just don't understand you know it's oh, this is such a hard concept and we often tell them well it is a hard concept it takes us centuries right until the mathematical community kind of understand what infinity is kind of <laughs> right um i don't think we fully yeah. understand still um but it, it's 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 hard concept and we're trying to cram the whole sort of 400 years of mathematics into uh into one subject this is this is extremely hard uh to to do so yes you need i think you you do need to struggle it struggle with it yourself um yeah and this, uh, something something else to point out maybe is that I don't think mathematicians like mathematics because it's easy. We yes. like it because it's hard. Yes. <laughs> that is a good point. I, I mean, the, <laughs> so to expect to expect yourself to enjoy learning something because it's easy. Mm. I'm not sure if this is the correct approach. the correct approach. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. no. Mm-hmm. I, I I it's certainly not mine. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a challenge. Yes, it's a, yes. it's a challenge, and it's very rewarding if you can surprise yourself with your abilities to solve oh, a problem or to understand definitely. something. Or this this whole experience makes it makes it wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah and that's that's not possible if it just comes naturally uh, <laughs> because with or with very little effort. I think. Yeah, yeah. naturally, yeah, so, maybe that's not the word, the correct way to say it. But yeah. with if you're if you don't put any effort into it. Mm. then you cannot expect a huge reward yeah. uh, or a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. Yes. So this, this image or, or, or myth or whether it's the, it was a reality of, of Archimedes yelling Eureka 
and 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 running <coughs> out of the bathtub and so on. This is this is a this is a re- realistic um, uh, experience of joy. I think um, which is, you're just so happy to that you figure out your um, how to solve your problem. And yeah, I I, I feel this many times um, when you when you yeah. solve a problem, you just this sense of joy that you get. It's it's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it and it re- it really is. It really it really is because it comes from from your yeah. You did it. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. It's it is figured it out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you, you figured it out. That, that yes. is that's wonderful. And yeah. the nice thing about mathematics is that you can have ideas about structures that you that describe abstract things, mm. and and with together with 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 being creative, you can transform these into it's permanent truths that will just <laughs> float around forever after that. Uh, it's yeah. just, it, it's, it's really nice. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Mark, one thing I would also want to ask you, um, you've worked now in various places after your studies, you came to South Africa, you did a postdoc, um, yes. here at Northwest university in Potsdam, and then you, did another postdoc in the UK, and yes. now you're an assistant professor at Leiden University. So there are already at least three institutions that you can um, <laughs> sort of <laughs> uh, gain experiences from. And uh, mm-hmm. do you um, can can you perhaps comment on sort of the differences of of your or where you work and um, the different colleagues, maybe or even simp- uh the different nature of these of these positions. I mean, as a postdoc, obviously, it is not the same with being a lecturer. Um, do you want to tell mm-hmm. perhaps some stories or comments? Yeah, on, no, on sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, um, uh, well, M- Martin Wortel already came up uh, yeah. today. <laughs> so it, this is this is one of the reasons why I, I, I did my postdoc in South Africa was because mm-hmm. Martin was there. Mm-hmm. Um, so. The, and the the main difference between being a lecturer or an assistant professor, as you say, and and a postdoc is that during your postdoc you have much more time to focus on your research because you're still developing as a mathematician. Not that I'm not developing right now, but mm-hmm. the main focus of doing a postdoc is to further develop your, your, your yeah you know, academic or scientific profile. Yeah, try and find. Uh, the, the subjects that you're interested in and mm-hmm. um, get your yeah you know, your research programs uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah develop them and see, see see what you understand what you what you what you like to do and what would like to work on and mm-hmm. network is also mm-hmm. very important mm-hmm. um, and Martin was there uh, and we still had research questions that um, uh, that arose from my PhD in the UK. So mm. that sort of naturally transitioned into further collaboration in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we mainly, we mainly worked on research. There's also, uh, there are some teaching responsibilities, but not mm-hmm. as much as, uh, as, now. <laughs> as you, as you have uh, when, when you're a lecturer. Yeah. Mm. This is, this is part of your job and yeah. it's fine. I, I love it. So this, mm. it, this is mm. absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, but it's certainly not as much as as you would do during your postdocs. Yeah. Um, then a- afterwards, uh, so the postdoc in the UK that was with my former PhD supervisor again uh, to uh, yeah to keep working on this 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 question relating metric geometry on cones mm. and mm. the interactions with the under possible possibly underlying algebraic structure of the space. Mm. Um, because it's a very hard question. Uh, we've I've been thinking about this for some time now, and yeah, it doesn't seem like it, it's going to solve uh, itself in 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 a, in a year or so. So I mean, this, but this is this is good. It's this is fine, good. Yeah. It means uh, it there's means no reason to be bored. Yeah, it's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's that's why um, that, that's what I worked on back in the UK. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So there was also teaching um, in the UK. 
okay. during okay. the, the, the postdoc there. Yeah. So it, it is certainly uh, recommendable, and I think it should be mandatory for, for postdocs for post also to yeah. be involved mm. with teaching. Mm. Because it, it, mm. if you want to pursue an academic career, yeah. well, mm. uh, a part of your responsibilities are teaching. So it's certainly mm -hmm. good that you, that you practice with these things and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. learn how to do it properly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, but now as uh, n now in Leiden, there yeah, the, 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 I have more responsibilities. So I I teach more. Mm -hmm. I am also a study advisor for second and third years. Mm -hmm. So this means that uh, yeah, I have which is which is great. Uh, lots of interaction with the students. Uh, try to see if if I if, if you can help them with their uh, study programs to keep track of how they're doing and. Mm uh make sure that they are aware of all, all of the rules and uh, uh maybe even more important the uh, uh uh oh what's what's the english word for this um uh exceptions mm. i think this is the word yeah mm -hmm. um and uh yeah you, and you also start supervising students now which is something mm -hmm. At least in yeah. mathematics, not, from what I know, is not not something you mm. do uh, when you're doing a postdoc. So I'm yeah. I'm supervising students as well, which is I think uh, I think an honor. Yeah, yeah. Someone's Definitely. interested in your subject, and you get to talk about it with them, and introduce yeah. them to the subject, and definitely, yeah. Yeah, I think this is this is great. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes you get to learn from them. Even <laughs> I found some. Yeah, of course. This, this is, yeah. this is yeah. true. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, mm. a, a lot of these students are incredibly talented. It's mm. just mm. wonderful to yeah. see this and to work with them. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we brought this up mm. in the previous episode. We were talking to a mathematics teacher, and she also mentioned that mm. sometimes she learned from students. And, and I think mm. this is uh, this is a humbling process sometimes when you when you're a, when you're an educator, right? Because you see. Mm. In your class, sometimes there are these students who are extremely talented, and um, and the kind of ideas yeah. that they have, and yeah, it's a, uh, mm -hmm. it's also, it's just incredible to have those students with you. I feel like, um, so this should not uh, bruise any ego. This is just part of the process. I think <laughs> that uh, yeah, we can learn from everybody. Yeah, even your students. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, our typical closing question to our guests is: uh, Do you have any advice for our students who are currently? Um, doing mathematics or taking mathematics courses um, on on uh, just general advice, I think, uh, how to study mm. math or what to do with your mathematics and so on. Yeah, this is a very good question. Probably the most important one that I can think of now is that students should not be scared of making mistakes. Hmm. It is normal and necessary to make mistakes or to say things that are not correct in order to learn how mm -hmm. to do them properly or to say correct things after mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and from what I can see a lot is that there is students develop some sort of reluctancy to, to talk about mathematics with their fellow students or with their with the study assistants or with the lecturers mm. because they're simply scared of saying something mm. that isn't true and this this fear is really paralyzing for your personal development yeah. uh, you should be able to say whatever you're thinking yeah uh, mm. uh, that this is necessary to do and it should definitely not scare you mm. Uh, mm. and i know this is hard because Making making a mistake is is perceived to be something bad, but it isn't it isn't really that bad. It's necessary mm. for mm. for a person to to, to learn. Mm. You need to make mm. mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, still. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Uh, and this is I I am expecting this, and I, it, it's normal, and it, it's also very interesting because you, as a result, you yeah, I mean, you just understand better what what you're thinking about. It's, yeah. It's perfectly mm. normal. Yeah, that's 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 maybe the best thing I can think of. Yeah, we we actually <laughs> just talked about this the other day. Um, like so, I'm not teaching first years, and then they, um, I feel that sometimes they they're afraid. Uh, how do I write things mm -hmm. correctly? And mm -hmm. they almost want um, want to be told on how to write things correctly. But I 
basically encourage them to try it yourself first. If yes. you get it wrong, we're here to guide you and correct you, right? Because if you never mm-hmm. try, then you never get into to that to that space where um, you're learning something. If someone just tell you and you parrot mm-hmm. back, then this is not learning. So I think exactly. that's it's a it's a great advice. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. you're not you're not really if 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 you don't try yourself, you end up being the best. Uh, uh, you end up making a selection from everyone else's behavior around you instead <laughs> of who you are. Being you, yeah. It's, yeah. It, yeah, this is, yeah. Yeah, that's very, very true. If you study mathematics because you love it, because you found the, 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 the beauty in the subject, I think it is definitely worth taking the risk and try to keep doing it as long as you can. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I know that it is discouraged and that it's very hard to find academic positions and that these, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a problem in the world because we simply yeah. produce more, more PhD students than there are jobs mm. uh, yeah. available. So, I mean, this, yeah. 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 Uh, but I think it is important that you, that you try to do the thing you love as long as you can. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. Uh, uh, well, okay, within 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 reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, You're it's welcome. Uh, Thank nice you to for, hear for the honor to be interviewed by you. Yeah, <laughs> it's the, it's the nice it's to hear your story. Yeah, I yeah. think this sometimes we need to hear this non-conventional stories because everyone always mm-hmm. thinks there's only that one way to become a mathematician, but this is not true. You can be a chef first mm-hmm. and then become a mathematician. This is also yes. possible. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's possible. Yeah. Okay, so until the next episode, see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>